You're listening to the Online Marketing Made Easy Podcast, episode number 183. Welcome to the Online Marketing Made Easy Podcast. Business advice so easy, you'll feel like you're cheating. And now your host, Amy Porterfield. Welcome back to another episode of the Online Marketing Made Easy Podcast. I'm your host, Amy Porterfield, and today we are diving into creating your promotional calendar. Now, in an ideal world, this episode just went live, you're listening, you're going to jump in, you're going to actually plan out your calendar this month, which is November when this is going live, and you're going to be ready to hit the ground running on the first day of 2018. That would be an optimal situation. However, let's say you're catching this episode way after it's gone live. Don't let that stop you from listening to this entire episode and grabbing the freebie because it's never too late to plan strategically inside of your business. And if you have felt that you're kind of flying by the seat of your pants, if you haven't really thought out the promotions ahead of time, if you're not really sure how you're going to make money in your business for the next six months, then it is time to sit down no matter what time of the year it is and plan out your promotional calendar. So here's a few things I want you to know before we dive in. Number one, I want you to do this now. No matter when you're listening to this, I want you to find a time that you're going to take the entire day and you are going to go through the mini workshop I've put together for you here, and you're going to plan out the next six months of your promotional calendar. And really I say promotional calendar, but we're going to add in everything into that calendar for the next six months, everything that you want to work on. So you heard me right. I want you to take an entire day to do this. If you want to get extra points here, I'd love to see you either book out a hotel room or book out a co-working space for the day. They rent out spaces and a lot of co-working spaces for just the day. Or maybe you do it at home, but you send everybody away. If you've got kids, they go to their grandmothers. If you've got a husband or a wife and they're not included in this, they take the day away from the house as well. And you have silence and you're able to just create and think and brainstorm and all that good stuff. So you do need an environment where you're not going to be interrupted. And I say the whole day because I want you to have the space to think and be creative and, and not feel rushed or pressured to get it done. Another thing is don't do it alone because we're going to be planning out the next six months of your business. I think it's really tough to do it all by yourself, but you might be thinking, wait a second, Amy, I'm a one man or I'm a one woman show. I don't have a VA. I don't have a project manager. It's just me. If that's the case, I want to encourage you to find a friend or a peer that knows your business enough and knows where you're going and what your goals are in order to at least be a sounding board with you. That would be ideal. If you don't have anybody on your team, find somebody that you trust that you can hash out some of these ideas that you might have, because this is tough to do all alone. So I do want to encourage you to have somebody with you when you're doing this. And if you have a virtual assistant, you could have them come into the conversation with you virtually, or even better, if you can afford it, fly them out. I would love for them to be in the proximity with you. I think it does make a difference, but it's not a deal breaker. If they can't be with you, Skype is fine. So do what you can, but I just wanted to give you some suggestions around how to get this all set up. Oh, one more thing. I'd love it if you had a whiteboard or those big sticky boards where you can write on them and tape them onto your wall all over the room if you want. It would be nice if you had somewhere where you could put your notes and your ideas on the wall so you could see them because that's kind of like the first part of this mini workshop that I'm going to walk you through. Okay. So I wanted to set the stage there. Oh, and one more thing. Why are we talking about the first six months of your business? The reason for that is, and I'm doing this in my own business as well. I'm literally walking you through the plan that we are doing in our business to plan for the new year. And the reason I've decided to do six months and not the whole 12 months is that you may want to repeat some of the successes that you've had in the first part of the year. 
I often do a promo more than once a year, the same promo. I might make it better the next time, but I'm all about the rinse and repeat if it worked out well the first time around. Also, you're going to do some things in the first six months that don't work. And I don't want you to repeat any of that stuff if it's not working. Also, opportunities are going to come your way, and I want you to have a little wiggle room to include them in the second half of the year if you would like. Now, one thing I'll say is, when do you plan the next six months? So let's say we're going to do January through June of 2018. When should you be planning July through the end of the year? I'd say at least a month in advance. It would be nice in June if you start to plan for July to the end of the year. So again, just some parameters around how you would tackle this planning workshop. And that's exactly what it is. I want you to follow the steps I'm going to lay out for you. And in order to do that, you're going to need a handy dandy cheat sheet. So that's what the freebie for today's episode is all about. I'm going to map it out here. You're going to hear me talk about it, give you suggestions and examples, but you're going to want the roadmap so that when you're ready for your entire day of calendar planning, you have the blueprint in front of you. You'll know exactly how to do it. Walk through the steps that I'm going to outline here. So in order for you to get your hands on the cheat sheet of how to plan your promotional calendar, all you need to do is go to amyporterfield.com forward slash 183 download. So simple as that, amyporterfield.com forward slash 183 download. It will take you right there to sign up and grab the freebie. Also, if you'd rather me text it to you, all you need to do is text the phrase 183 download to the number 33444. So I'll text it to you if that's easier. Okay, so I'm not going to make you wait any longer. Let's go ahead and dive in. Okay, step number one. This is where we've got to get clear about what a wildly successful year looks like for you. And this is different for all of us. So step number one is to answer this question. If I were to wave a magic wand and you instantly had a breakthrough year, what would that year look like? And even more so, what would you do in your business if you couldn't fail. This is where I want you to dream big. I want you to get excited about what a breakthrough year could look like in your business. And again, remember, I'm waving a magic wand and you instantly have a wildly successful year. We're fast forwarding it. It is done. It is so. So what does that year look like? I would love for you to spend at least 30 minutes brainstorming. Maybe turn on some music and just get into that state of really thinking about what a breakthrough year would look like for you. So that is the first step. Now, in order to help you out, I want to give you some examples. So I asked one of my students, what would a breakthrough year look like for you? And she knew right away. She said, number one, I would never worry about where my next client would come from. In fact, I'd have a wait list and I would never, ever have to worry about filling up my mastermind because I would have 12 students in my mastermind for a full year. She also said that she would have 5,000 people on her email list by the end of the year, and she would plan a live workshop for the summer so that she never, ever has to worry again when that summertime comes and the sales start to go down. So she's always been worried about the summertime blues where her sales have gone down. So she said she'd have a live workshop that worked like gangbusters. She also said she'd have a $300,000 year. That's what she wanted. She wanted to earn $300,000 in revenue by the end of the year. So to her, this was a wildly successful year. It could be so dramatically different for you. You could have way more loftier, bigger dreams or maybe simpler dreams. No judgment. You do you. What would a wildly successful year look like for you? That is step number one. Step number two, you've got to look at your non-negotiables. So what are you not willing to do or not willing to experience 
to get to your wildly successful year. And I thought this one was really great. I've got to give a shout out to my friend, James Wedmore. He told me about this one and I thought, oh yeah, we're including this in my own planning and I want to share it with my listeners as well. So let me give you an example. One of my non-negotiables for next year is I'm not working nights and I'm not working weekends. Done. It's not happening. I got into a really bad habit of doing that this year and I just don't want to do it again. So no weekends, no nights. So that is my one non-negotiable. I'm sure I have a few, but that was the first one that came to mind when I was putting this together for you. I asked one of my students and she says, I will not take another client because I am fearful that I won't make enough money. No more. I'm done. So that was her non-negotiable. So every time now moving forward, when she makes a decision in the new year to take a client on, if there's any ounce of I'm taking them on because I'm fearful I won't make enough money or there won't be enough clients, and that's the only reason she's taking that client on, nope, not happening. Non-negotiable. Or you could look at a non-negotiable as every single week you're going to get a massage. I know that might seem like a weird non-negotiable, but here's why I look at it that way. It's non-negotiable that you are going to have a self-care day once a week or once a month if that feels like a little much. But if you put it down here saying this is happening, it's non-negotiable. I've got to have one day of self-care every month then it's going to happen. You've got to declare this stuff in order to make it real. So those are just some examples that you might want to think about, but what are your non-negotiables? Okay, moving on to step three. This one's easy. You're going to declare your number. Now, there's many ways you can plan out your promotional calendar, and this is the way I do it. So I'm sharing with you what we do in my business and what I think will help you. And I know it's helped a lot of my students and it might be weird that I'm saying declare your number, but here's my hunch. I believe you already have a number in mind. Even before we look at how you want to make money next year, what promotions you're putting on the calendar, what projects you're going to work on before we even figure out any of that, I'm guessing you already have a number. And if you say you don't, Let's say you weren't scared to say that number. Let's say you dug a little bit deeper and I said, okay, if I really force you to come up with a number, how much money do you want to earn next year? I'm guessing if I pushed you a little bit, you would come up with that number. But many of you are already shouting it out. If you're alone, just shout it out now. You already know your number. And when I was talking to one of my students right away, she said 300K, that's my number. I want to earn $300,000 in one year. She said it would be life-changing for me. It would mean that my business was finally getting the momentum that I knew it would get. I just had to stick with it. So she knows her number. I'm going to guess you know yours. If you don't, okay, you could skip this step, but I really encourage you to at least put something down that feels good and exciting to you. Okay, so now let's move into step four. And step four is to take a look at the past in order to move forward. And it's all about getting clarity. So when I say take a look at the past, I mean the year that you've just finished or you're just about to finish. We need to look at what worked and what didn't work in order to know where we wanna go for the next year. Now, it would be great if you could whiteboard this or get those big sticky poster boards because I'd love for you to stand back and look at all of the ideas and insights and aha moments you have in step four. So if you've got a whiteboard or something like it, use it for this step. Also, if you can come to the table with some metrics, that would be great. Metrics like how much has your email list grown this year or what's your average email click-through rate or average email open rate? You might not know, but if you do, it's great to come to the table with some metrics. If you did any promos, go ahead and do a little digging. What was your webinar conversion rate on average this year? Or maybe your webinar show up rate, just kind of getting a sense of what the numbers look like more so than anything. You need to know your financials. How much money did you make this year? How much money did you spend on expenses? So how much came in, how much went out? 
That's really important. And I remember when I was just starting out, I'd literally close my eyes and not look at those numbers. I didn't feel like they were anything impressive and I didn't want to be reminded that they made me feel bad. And I wish I didn't do that. I wish at all times I knew what was going on with my financials because listen, friends, we're only going up from here, right? Okay. So once you have some metrics, if you can grab those, great. If you just can't, keep moving forward. I want you to ask yourself a series of questions. And this is the reason why I'd love for you to include your VA or project manager or somebody that knows your business enough to have an opinion around some of these questions. So it's not just you, you might be a little bit biased here. So I want to hear from anybody that has been involved in your business and can offer a really great insight or alternative to how you might look at things and how the year went. So I have all these questions I'm going to run through really quickly here in the cheat sheet that I've provided with this episode. So again, amyporterfield.com forward slash 183 download. you definitely want to grab it so you don't have to take a bunch of notes right now. So here are the questions I want you to ask yourself, and then I want you to whiteboard all of this. Number one, what did we enjoy working on this year? What did we just absolutely love creating and working on? Number two, what did we hate working on? What was tough? What felt difficult? What do we never, ever want to do again? Here's another one. What was our biggest moneymaker? And what was our least moneymaker? What actually put us in the red, if anything? Here's another one. What brought in the most leads for us in our business? So maybe you had a great freebie or a great promo that brought in a bunch of leads. Put it on the whiteboard. Also, where were we light on resources? So maybe you didn't have enough hands on board to create your weekly content, or maybe you weren't able to really build out a promo the way you wanted to, because you just didn't have enough people to work on it. Were you light on people? Were you light on content creation? Where did you struggle? Cause you didn't have enough people in place. Now, that doesn't mean you're able to hire a bunch of people for the next year, but you've just got to be aware of this stuff. Now, I might not have asked enough questions here. If you can think of other stuff that you want to just bring to light about what happened this year, put it on the whiteboard or put it on your big post-it notes because it all comes out in this session. You could take 30 minutes to an hour for step four. That's why, again, I want you to have some white space so you don't feel rushed here, but get it all out because this is your final year in review. And I want you to be really transparent and not hold back. Another thing that I do in step four is I take a moment to write down all the stuff that I wanted to work on this year, but I never got to. This is a good one. So I wanted to do a live workshop this year. Instead of pre-recording the course, I wanted to deliver it live over six weeks. I wanted to pre-sell it. I've been dying to do that and I just couldn't get to it. So you can bet it's going to be on the 2018 promotional calendar, but this is a time to write down all the stuff that you've talked about and you wished you could do. You're so bummed. You never got to it, write it out. So that's another thing that's important because in the next step, we're going to get into planning all of this stuff for the next year. So we've got to look at where we've been before we know where we want to go. All right, let's move in to step number five. Now, step number five is the fun stuff. This is what you've been waiting for. We're actually to the point now where you're going to calendar your big promotions for the year. Actually, you're going to calendar everything. Step number five is actually broken up into two phases. The first phase is we're going to decide how you're going to make money in your business. The second phase is to map it all out. Now, remember, we're only focusing on the next six months. We do that because it's way more manageable and it allows you some flexibility. You can go through the next six months, see how it works out, what worked, what didn't work, and then you can plan on the second half of the year based on what worked and what didn't work, and that allows you to be a lot more strategic. So we're only focusing on the next six months. So again, phase one of step five calendar planning is to decide how you're going to make money. 
And I'm going to give you a list of different ways you might want to make money in the next six months. I'm sure this list could be a whole lot longer, but let me just at least get those creative juices flowing. First, you could create and sell a pre-recorded digital course. Number two, you could create and sell a live online workshop. So instead of pre-recording it, you can pre-sell this live online workshop and then deliver it, let's say, over the next six weeks. You could do an in-person workshop, like in real life. You could have coaching and consulting clients. You could speak on stage and get paid for that. You could do done-for-you services, like if you're a web developer or a nutritionist who creates meal plans. So you could do some service-based business. You could create a mastermind and people pay to be in your mastermind or maybe at a lesser scale, a group coaching program. Another thing you could do is you could do affiliate marketing. So either you promote somebody else's programs, products, or services, or they promote yours. So affiliate marketing could be part of your master plan as well. So the first action item is to list all the ways that you plan to make money in the next six months. So once you write those all down, you can whiteboard this and put it on the wall so you can look at all the ways you plan to make money in the new year. And then this is the hard part, but I want you to do it. I want you to get specific on your revenue projections for each of those ways you plan to make money. So let me give you an example of one of my students. She recently quit her corporate job of a CFO. So she was a CFO at this really big company. She quit because she wants to create a business around being a CFO for hire for smaller businesses. And she wants to teach other people how to be the CFO in their own online businesses. So she hasn't worked out all the details yet, but when I asked her, how do you want to make money next year? This is the list she gave me. She said, one, I do want to bring in some retainer revenue, meaning I keep my current corporate client on retainer and I do work for them every single month, but just a little bit of work because I don't want it to be full-time anymore. The second thing she said is I'm going to take six coaching clients. So I'm going to take six coaching clients and work with them over the length of the next six months. Then she said, I'm going to create a small group coaching program for those that can't afford my one-on-one coaching, and I'm going to get 10 people in my small group coaching program. And then she's going to create an online training course around the financial health of your business. And this is just for really small businesses, she says. So she has kind of an idea of what the program's gonna be, but she doesn't have it hashed out all yet. So this is her list of how she's going to make money over the next six months. Again, she doesn't have all the details yet, but she feels pretty confident that these are the things that she can do. And then from there, the next thing she's going to do is she's going to get specific on her revenue projections for each of the ways she plans to make money. Now, remember, she wants to make 300K over the next 12 months. So she's gonna cut that in half. You don't have to cut it in half. You can make the money however you want over the course of the year. But to make this easy, she's gonna cut it in half and say, okay, for the next six months, I need to make 150K. So I'm gonna look at this list of all the ways I'm going to make money. And now I'm gonna work out some projections to see if I can get to that 150K. And to be honest, the first time she did it, she came in way low, meaning she wasn't anywhere near 150K. I think she hit 90K. And so at that point, I said, okay, here are a few troubleshooting tips that you can consider. And I put this in the cheat sheet for all of you, but I'll walk through some of them really quickly. So if you do this exercise and you realize, wait a second, I'm coming up short in terms of my revenue projections, here's a few things that you can consider. Number one, you might want to change the price points of some of your ways that you plan to make money. So if you're doing a coaching package, a mastermind, you might need to increase your prices or increase the number of people that are going to be in your mastermind or the number of coaching clients you plan to take. Also, you can create a VIP experience. You can think about upsells. So maybe you've got six coaching clients like my student wants, but then maybe she's going to also take two VIP clients where they get a full day working with her in person. 
So she could make a VIP experience to add a little bit more revenue to the first six months. She could add in some affiliate promotions. Maybe she promotes somebody's program, product, or service. So that's a great way to add a little padding in there if you come up short. And also, she could always go back to the drawing board. Remember, I'm encouraging you to take the entire day to go through this mini workshop of planning your promotional calendar so that you can go back to the drawing board and just erase it all and start over. So if you look at all the different ways you plan to make money, you do your revenue projections and you're like, no way, this is not adding up. You might think this isn't big enough or this is too big or it just doesn't feel right. Go back to the drawing board, start over, do it again. You have the time and space to do so. And at the end of the day, you want to dream big, but it also has to be doable. You need to commit to saying, I'm actually going to do this. I'm going to hit these goals. I'm going to do the work it takes to fulfill all of this planning that I've put together. So you might need to work on it a little bit throughout the day to get it into a place that you feel really confident and excited that you can do it. Now, one more thing, and then I'll move on. You might be scared and that's okay. If you feel like the whole plan you put together is so easy breezy, you could do it with your eyes closed, go back to the drawing board. Obviously that is not what we want. We don't want it to be so easy that it's not going to challenge you, but I feel like I don't even need to say that. So many of my listeners are huge go-getters and achievers. So if anything, you might need to scale it back just a little bit. I know you, I know how you operate. Okay. So remember I said that step number five, calendar planning is actually in two phases. Now we're moving into the really good stuff where you're going to map it out on a calendar. So what you'll need is a big dry erase calendar that you can tape to the wall. I typically have only used the kind of calendars that are a full year. And of course, we're only going to use the first six months. But if you can find one that is just the next six months, that's great. The key here is that it's a dry erase calendar. So you can write all your promotions up there and then realize you need to move them all around. This is a lot of trial and error. So you can erase it and start over. So I highly recommend you get a calendar. If I could find a good one, I'll link to it in the show notes at amyporterfield.com forward slash 183. All right. So now that you have your calendar taped to the wall, you're going to look at that list of all the different ways you plan to make money in the new year. And the goal here is to figure out what needs to happen in order for you to make that money. Let me give you an example. I was talking to my student again, that is the CFO who wants to quit her corporate job and start her online business. And remember, one of the things on that list was that she wanted six coaching clients. And I said, okay, how are you going to fill up your six coaching client spots? And she said to me, well, I'm going to send some emails. I've got to run some Facebook ads, maybe do a webinar. I might even do some affiliate referrals and I think that probably will cover it. And I was silent. I just looked at her and I said, um, no, that is not going to work. You actually have to plan out the time on your calendar where you are going to focus on filling those slots, which pretty much means you're going to do a promotion or a launch. Now, when I said launch to her, she said that word just freaks me out. I feel like I'm going to get burned out and stressed out. And it's too big for my one woman show kind of business that I've just started. I can't do a launch. And I said, don't get caught up on that word. Let's just take it out. Just call it a promo or a campaign. Those things actually matter if you just change your language a little bit, but she needs to have a concentrated time where she is promoting her coaching spots. And so what we did instead is we looked at the calendar and we said, okay, let's choose two weeks in early, let's say January or early February, where you are only focused on filling those spots. So yes, you may do a webinar, you may do an email promotion, you might even do a challenge, whatever it might be, but let's plan out when you're going to do this. So she chose the first week of February, where she is actually the first two weeks of February, where she's going to focus on 
filling her coaching spots. But what that means is that then she needs to give herself a little bit of time to get all those promotional materials in place. This is the stuff that people typically won't put on their calendar. So if in the first two weeks of February, she's promoting her coaching opportunities, then what she's going to do in the last two weeks of January is she's going to work on let's say a webinar or putting together some emails for a special email campaign or whatever it might be. So she has to kind of think about what she wants to do in terms of that promotion to give herself enough time to one promote, but to plan for the promotion. So again, she doesn't have to have it all figured out, but she has to have a pretty good sense of what she wants to do in order to get the dates on the calendar. So we went through one by one on her list of how she's going to make money. And then we decided, what is this? Is it an email campaign? Is it a webinar campaign? Is it a challenge that you want to do? How are you going to fill up the opportunities in terms of what you've put down here of how you're going to make money? Now, here's where things get interesting. After you put down all of your promotions on your calendar, I want you to step back. And a few things I want you to look for. Number one, do you have enough white space between your promotions? And the reason why you want the white space is to one, give your team and yourself a break. And number two, give your audience a break. You don't want to be promoting all the time. So it's important that you actually see the white space between the promotions. I like to give at least 30 days before I ever promote something again. And also you want to think about the other projects that are not necessarily promotions. This is where I really screwed up this year and why I'm doing my planning differently in the coming year. One, I planned out the entire year. I shouldn't have done that. I'm only going to do the first six months like I told you. But two, I never even put on the calendar my website redesign and my business rebranding. Two really big projects that were expensive and took a lot of time, effort, and focus. They weren't even on the calendar. So guess what I was trying to do while I was putting together my big B-School promotion? Or guess what I was trying to do while I was trying to rework one of our course funnels for an evergreen launch that we were doing? Oh, I was also trying to tackle my website redesign and do photo shoots for my rebranding and choose colors and fonts and all this other stuff. I was so overwhelmed and so was my team. And so the big lesson here that you can learn from my mistake is that you have to put those big projects on the calendar. Now they might overlap with some of the promotions you're doing, but you still need to put them on there. So you're aware of it because then you can say this will never work, or I'm going to need a little extra help during this time, or I'm going to need to give myself more time to finish this because there's a lot of overlap right now. So I want you now to think about all the other stuff that you want to do this year that has nothing to do with your promotions, like direct revenue sources, but they have everything to do with driving your business forward. So again, you're relaunching a website or you're launching your podcast or a new video show you might want to do, or maybe you're planning for a big live event that's going to happen at the end of the year, but there's a bunch of stuff you need to do at the beginning of the year to get ready. So it is important that you look forward and you look all around. What are all the things that you want to do? Now, I know this might feel sobering a little bit because you're thinking, Amy, you're taking away all the creativity. Like this doesn't feel fun anymore because it doesn't feel as doable. And this is where we have to be big boys and big girls when it comes to being an entrepreneur. You can't do everything all at once. You do have to spread this out because you will hit overwhelm. I have no doubt in my mind. Listen to a girl that's been there too often. You really need to plan this out and give yourself more white space, allow yourself some extra grace, and really think about how long something is going to take you to create before you can launch. So what about the fact that you want to create an online training course, or you want to create a membership site that you plan to promote because that's a number one way you're going to make money. 
you've got to give yourself the time to create it. So I guess my whole goal of this episode is to be as real as possible with you, because if I'm not, then you're going to put together a really fancy calendar that you will never execute. And that is the last thing I want from you. Also, this is the time that I need to mention FOMO, fear of missing out. Because as you put your calendar together and you just heard me say, you can't do everything all at once, there are going to be things that you really want to do. And I suggest you open a page in your notebook or find a page inside of a Google doc and you write all the things down that you want to do that just are not going to make the six month calendar because you don't want to forget them. You want to make them real. So you've got to write them down, but not now. They're just not going to happen right now, but that doesn't mean that they're never going to happen. Fear of missing out is real. When you start to see other people work on projects that look exciting, when they start doing big promos and you're thinking, I'm still working on my course, that's going to happen. But have your little list of the things you just can't wait to get to, but you're going to stay the course on your six month promotional calendar. Okay. We're in the home stretch. We have done the biggest step, which is step number five, planning your calendar. We did it in two phases. First, how you're going to make money in your revenue projections with each of those things. And then second, literally putting it on a calendar and seeing it all mapped out. From there, I want you to review all the work you've done for the day. And I want you to ask yourself a few key questions. Again, this will be in your cheat sheet, but this is the really, really important stuff. You've done all the work at this point. You might have a bedroom full of sticky notes and poster boards and just craziness. It might look like what my mom would say when she'd come into my room when I was a teenager. She always used to say, it looks like a cyclone hit this room. I don't know. That was her favorite thing to say. That might be what your room looks like after this whole exercise or this whole planning day. But now you're going to step back, you're going to look at everything and you're going to ask yourself a series of questions. Number one, if you were to pull this off, if you were going to have your wildly successful year and it looked like this, now you're looking at your calendar. Are you excited? Does it light you up? Do you think bring it on? Because if that is a no, then that whole thing is a hell no. We've got to change it. You've got to feel excited. Number two, do you feel a little or a lot scared when you look at that calendar and everything you've created over the course of the day? Do you feel scared? And I want the answer to be yes. Even if it's just a little or a lot, we've got to step outside of our comfort zone. I don't want you to be smooth sailing all year and not push yourself. You don't have to hustle. You don't have to kill yourself but I do want you to step outside of your comfort zone. That doesn't mean you need to work really hard. It means that I want you to push yourself and make some bold moves. That's what I mean. And so I want you to feel a little scared or anxious or kind of nervous excitement around it. The other question I want you to ask is, who do I need to be in order for this all to work? What kind of person needs to show up to just crush these goals. And I'm going to guess, because this is true in my life, I got to show up a little bit different. If those goals are big and audacious and a little bit scary, I might have to change some of my maybe bad habits, or I might need to get more organized or be more efficient. You know, there's a few different things that might need to happen. Who do you need to be? How do you need to show up in order to crush those goals? Also, Who do you need on your team? Now, this is a scary question for so many of us that are just starting out and we don't have a lot of funds. Before you go into, I can't afford to hire any people, I do want you to answer this question as though you could. Who do you need to have on your team in order to make this work without killing yourself because you're not going to do it all alone? That is not a badge of honor to run your business all by yourself. You are missing out on so many amazing opportunities and making a bigger impact in this world by thinking you have to do this all alone. So maybe it's time for a VA or maybe it's time for a project manager. I have an 
awesome podcast episode about how to hire a project manager. My financial advisor actually listened to that podcast episode and he took action. He has a full-time project manager that he said is just kicking butt. He couldn't be more excited. And he was scared to take that big leap and hire someone full-time, but he's never looked back. You might just amaze yourself with what a few new hires could mean for your wildly successful year. Another thing is that as you're looking at everything, are there any red flags? Is anything nagging at you, eating at you? Do you know that just this one thing is not going to happen or you really just do not want to do that one promotion that you see on there? Is there anything that there's this little chatterbox in your head saying, no, 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 something's off there. Fix it. You've got the time. You're giving yourself the whole day. You can go back and rework anything you need to rework. And there you have it. Those are the six steps to walk through your full day of planning your next six months. Now, what would you do after that? Let's say you wrap it all up. You're done for the day. What is your next big step? Well, that would be to choose the first thing that's going to happen. Like look at the next six months. What is the first, let's say, promotion and work backwards in terms of how am I going to get prepared to launch or promote or do this campaign. So you're going to take that first big project and you're going to start tackling it right away. So that's how you would work in this calendar. You can't do all the stuff. So you're taking one top priority at a time and you're putting it into, let's say a sauna or base camp. You're planning it all out. You're getting your team on board. And speaking of getting your team on board, After you've solidified this calendar and you feel really good about it, you do need to share it with your team if you do have a team. Get everybody on board at that point. You don't need to include your entire team in your planning day. You could, but you don't have to. But anybody who wasn't part of the big planning day, you do need to communicate with them, get them excited, get them on board, let them know what you're going to be doing for the next six months. Communication is key here so that everybody gets on board. Okay, so let's go ahead and officially wrap this up. So there you have it. I'll make the wrap up short and sweet. I did this episode for you today because it's a question I get asked all the time. I often hear, Amy, how do you plan out your promotions for the year? And I thought, well, I could give some tips, ideas, insights, but why not give you the exact blueprint that I use in my own business? And don't forget to get the cheat sheet because when you're ready to take action, when you're ready to literally take an entire day to plan out the next six months, you're gonna find my cheat sheet incredibly valuable so you don't miss a step. And I've added a few extra insights in there that I haven't talked about on this episode, so I promise it will be incredibly valuable. Go to amyporterfield.com forward slash 183 download to get your hands on it. amyporterfield.com forward slash 183 download. And if you go through this process, I want to hear about it. Tell me on social media what it was like for you, where you did it, who you included on your team as you walk through the process, and just give me some insights and share with me what you thought about it because I'm dying to hear. Okay. Here's to your most wildly successful year ever. Have a wonderful week and I'll see you here again next week. Bye for now. Thanks for listening to the Online Marketing Made Easy podcast at www.amyporterfield.com. 